Hello everyone. Myself, Professor K.M. Majan from Department of Mechanical Engineering at Godavari Foundations, Godavari College of Engineering, Jalgaon. So today we are here to discuss introduction to refrigeration. So this will be the contents of today's lecture. So first, what is refrigeration? Refrigeration may be defined as the process of achieving and maintaining a temperature that of below that of the surrounding the aim being to cool some product or space to the required temperature in other words you say refrigeration means artificial cooling heat is removed from lower temperature reservoir and transferred to a higher temperature reservoir so simply we can say refrigeration is a continuous extraction of a heat from a substance or a space which is to be cooled in order to maintain its temperature in order to maintain its temperature okay so that is the simple definition of refrigeration so how it is different from cooling so cooling and refrigeration uh, both are not the same processes or same phenomena. So this is the best example to explain how cooling differs from your refrigeration. So let's uh, suppose there is a cup of tea and the temperature of that tea is near about 80 degrees centigrade. And if you have to cool it and if you kept it you know, open to atmosphere, then it will lose its uh, heat to the atmosphere okay and it will cool down to 30 degree okay so this is called cooling so in cooling the heat flows from higher temperature to lower temperature here the higher temperature is of the tea and the lower temperature is of the surrounding so and in refrigeration okay the heat flows from lower temperature to higher temperature so take a reverse example of this suppose if you are having a tea at 30 degrees centigrade and the surrounding temperature is near about 40 degrees centigrade and if you have to maintain the tea at 30 degrees centigrade then you need to continuously extract the heat from the temperature at 30 degrees so that is called refrigeration so that, that is the basic difference between your refrigeration and cooling so unit of refrigeration so to measure every effect we need to express it uh, in terms of units so the general unit that is used for uh, to measure refrigeration effect or cooling effect is ton of refrigeration so generally we measure it in ton of refrigeration okay so how it is defined a ton of refrigeration is defined as the amount of refrigeration effect produced by uniform melting of one ton of ice from an at zero degree centigrade in 24 hours okay so suppose this is a one ton of ice okay one ton of ice means 1000 kg of ice and if you have to now if you have to melt this ice uh, into water and the water will be also at zero degree centigrade then you need to supply some heat to it in order to mail it so or it need to be extracted some heat from the surrounding so that it will get melt now suppose if there is a room close room and if you are keeping that 1000 kg of ice in that room okay so the ice will start extracting heat from that room or the surrounding or the occupants of that room so it will start melting so all this process will happen within 24 hours so during 24 hours the ice cube 1000 kg of ice cube will extract the heat from that room and it will ultimately cool that room so how uh, whatever cooling effect that has been produced within that 24 hours in that closed room that is called one ton of refrigeration okay so uh, one ton of ice means 1000 kg okay and 335 kilojoule per kg is the latent heat of fusion of ice latent heat of fusion of ice means it is the total amount of heat required to melt one kg of ice and to convert it into one kg of water
like 335 kJ per kg so for 1000 kg amount of heat required to melt uh, one ton of ice in 24 hours now this is the total amount of heat for for per minute total heat required or total heat needed to be supplied to that ice cube per minute so you have to divide it by 24 to convert it into per uh, heat required per hour again if uh, you have to find out it in minute so you have to divide it by 60 so you will get the total heat required to be supplied to that ice cube per minute will be 232.6 kJ per minute so this is the theoretical value practically we, it is taken 210 kJ per minute now if you convert this 210 kJ per minute into kJ per second simply you have to divide it by 60 so it will be 3.5 kJ per second or 3.5 kW so one ton of refrigeration employed or one ton uh, ac employed so that simply means every second you are extracting the heat from that room uh, that is 3.5 kilojoule if you are extracting the heat at this rate then you may say one ton of refrigeration effect is being produced there so methods of refrigeration so these are the methods of refrigeration air refrigeration system vapor compression refrigeration system vapor absorption refrigeration system then ice refrigeration then uh, there are some special refrigeration system and that are also called non-conventional refrigeration system so in that vertex, vertex tube refrigeration thermoelectric refrigeration system steam jet refrigeration system so all these are the mechanical refrigeration systems now applications of refrigeration so the refrigeration process or uh, the refrigeration is used in food processing for preserving uh, preservation of the food items and for uh, transportation or distribution of that uh, food packages uh, we use refrigerated vans also refrigeration is used in your chemical processes and chemical industries special applications such as cold treatment of metals medical construction ice skating etc and uh, most importantly it is also used for comfort air conditioning so uh, air conditioning is uh, it is also used as uh, industrial air conditioning such as in, in textiles printing manufacturing photography computer rooms power plants vehicular etc so comfort on commercial or resident residential air conditioning so all these are the uses of your refrigeration now as per the definition of refrigeration okay refrigeration is a continuous extraction of heat from a substance or space which is to be cooled and the space or that uh, particular thing which is already uh, the temperature of which is already below its surrounding okay and you have to extract the heat from it okay so what does second law of thermodynamics says as per Clausius statement it is uh, impossible to construct a device which operating in a cycle will produce no effect other than transfer of heat from colder to hotter body so the simple meaning of this is you cannot transfer the heat from uh, a lower temperature to higher temperature body okay suppose in in this picture t1 is the higher temperature and t2 is the lower temperature so naturally the heat will flow from t1 to t2 by conduction or convection by any means of it transfer it will be transferred from the higher body temperature to lower body temperature but in refrigeration we have to do the reverse of this means we have to do transfer the heat from the lower body temperature to higher body temperature so this thing is not possible as per the Clausius statement classes uh, or the classes laws but he had added one sentence there without the aid of the external agency so if you have to do this you have to add some external agency there or you have to expend some work or spend uh, some energy there to do this uh, reverse thing that means transfer the heat from lower temperature body to higher temperature body so this is the basic vapor compression refrigeration cycle so any refrigeration cycle has four, four basic components uh, that are com uh, compressor condenser then expansion valve and evaporator so in any vcr system 
uh, vapor compression refrigeration cycle these are the four basic components so along with these four basic components there are so many uh, mountings safety devices as well as accessories are used to enhance the performance of that system but uh, these are the main four basic components so let's see how this vcr works so let's start from here compressor so this is the inlet of the compressor so at the inlet of the compressor the state of that uh, refrigerant uh, okay uh, i forgot to mention this is the closed cycle okay closed cycle means the working substance used here is having a fixed mass the same mass of working substance is uh, recirculated again and again throughout the cycle and different processes uh, are carried out over that working substance or working fluid just like compression condensation expansion and evaporation on the same mass so it's a closed cycle so let's see it's working so at the inlet of the uh, compressor the state of that working substance or that refrigerant that is used in this vcr cycle okay so that is low pressure low temperature vapor state so this low pressure low temperature vapor uh, fluid is com compressed here and it is converted into high pressure high temperature vapor okay so at point 3 it is a high pressure high temperature vapor so this high pressure high temperature vapor is then passed through this condenser okay so condensation process theoretically it is a constant pressure and constant temperature process so here the working substance or that refrigerant has to reject its latent heat of condensation to the cooling medium so generally the cooling medium used here is the either water or air uh, so as soon as this uh, high pressure high temperature refrigerant passes through this condenser so it rejects its latent heat of uh, condensation to the atmosphere or to the cooling medium and it gets converted into liquid so at the end of the condenser that is at point 4 the state of that refrigerant will be high pressure high temperature liquid state so this high pressure high temperature liquid refrigerant is then passed through this expansion device so expansion device is nothing but it suddenly lower down the pressure just like your capillary tube or solenoid uh, expansion valves are used there so in your domestic refrigerator a capillary tube is used there so as soon as this high pressure high temperature pressure liquid uh, passes through this expansion valve is partially get evaporated while passing through this so this is the very uh, magical phenomenon here actually the cooling occurs here during your expansion was because as soon as we expand that high pressure high temperature fluid so its pressure as well as temperature gets lower down at this point one okay so why this occurs we will see in the next slide why, uh, why the cooling occurs in the expansion okay so at this point one the state of that uh, working fluid is uh, mixture of uh, vapor and liquid and uh, pressure is low and temperature is also low at point one the pressure as well as the temperature is low so this uh, low pressure low temperature mixture of liquid and uh, vapor is supplied to this evaporator now this evaporator is the space which is to be cooled in your domestic refrigerator we call it chiller so a chiller is nothing but your evaporator you might have seen the coils evaporator coils are surrounded by to that chiller so as soon as this uh, mixture passes through this evaporator okay so the cooling load is available there just like your food products or anything or water may be there uh, kept for cooling so it absorbs the latent heat of evaporation from that space which is to be cooled the and the refrigerant uh, uh, while passing through this evaporator gets completely evaporated okay so at the exit of this uh, evaporator again the state is low pressure low temperature vapor state okay so in this way again this low pressure low temperature vapor is supplied to this compressor and um, the cycle is continued so this generally this vcr system is also called as a latent heat pump okay so here we extract the latent heat of uh, evaporation and it uh, we reject here it to the in condenser we reject here it to the atmosphere as a 
latent heat of condensation so here it is a ph diagram on ph chart it is shown so generally this so on ph chart it is shown here 0.1 to 2 is the evaporation process process 2 to 3 is the compression process 3 to 4 is the condensation and 4 to 1 is the expansion process so with this components you can see it in better way how this process are car carried out here so basic behind the cooling so as we have seen in the previous slide that during the cooling the temperature uh, falls down there so why this occurs so this occurs because of that joule thomson effect so as we know gases are liquefied by uh, applying joule thomson effect so when the high highly compressed gas is suddenly allowed to expand it causes cooling so here in this figure you can see here uh, suppose these are the compressed gases and some porous material is kept here okay means a restricted exit is there suppose so obviously what will happen here as soon as these gases compressed gases passes through this restricted passage uh, the pressure will drop down there and velocity will increase that means there will be expansion of that so during that expansion uh, heat energy is absorbed there from the gas itself and it gets cooled down so that is the magical phenomenon here that occurs here that the, we acquire the coolings so better example of that you can uh, see here so you must have also experience suppose this is your pressure cooker so when the pressure cooker blows its whistle so you can imagine in the inside of that pressure cooker the pressure and temperature is high of that steam but as soon as it uh, is blows the whistle you can put your hand on the steam coming out from that vessel so why it is possible because you are actually expanding that high pressure high pressure uh, high temperature steam through that vessel so as it expands its temperature lower down so that you can put your hand into that steam otherwise it would not have been possible to kept your bare hand in that steam it will it would have burnt so because of that expansion the temperature of that inside steam as soon as we suddenly expand it through that vessel it lower down and so we are able to hold our hand into that so that is the phenomenon behind your expansion and why we occur cooling during that expansion so you can understand this in better way now performance of a vcr so just like your every machines we need to measure the performance so for engines we calculate efficiency uh, but here the performance of that vcr cycles are measured by cop so what is cop coefficient of performance so formula is the same output upon input so here the output is the refrigerating effect means we are extracting some heat from that Uh, refrigerated space so that will be our output here so this is refrigerating effect is the output and what is the input here you need to supply some mechanical energy uh, to that working fluid in order to compress it so generally the mechanical energy is supplied during this compression process here so for that we you need to supply some electrical energy so that will be your work uh, work input here so this is the ph chart also from ph chart you can find out this cop h1 minus h4 it is the refrigerating effect means you are extracting the heat here during this process 4 to 1 so if you have to find out the total heat extracted so you from this ph chart you need to get the enthalpy at point 1 and enthalpy at point 4 so once you get that you simply you need to subtract it h1 minus h4 that will give you the total amount of heat extracted during this process 4 to 1 or this evaporation process so what done so as you know work is done during this compression process so again if you are knowing the enthalpy is at point 2 already we are knowing the enthalpy at point 1 okay so simply s2 minus h1 will give you the work done during the compression so in this way coefficient of performance uh, is find out here so generally the value of cop is lesser than uh, greater than 1 so in your efficiency when we find out efficiency the values of that efficiency is less, uh, lesser than unit, unity so that is in fraction 
so what is the basic difference between your cop and efficiency generally we find out the efficiency for that work producing machines and we find out the cop is for work absorbing machines so so that was all about your performance of vcr now the working substance that is used here that is called refrigerant so that is also very important here that the working substance properties are plays a very vital role here in the refrigeration process because that are the special substances and that have some special properties just like a low boiling point and a high latent heat of evaporation uh, vaporization uh, vapor density is high they are low tox uh, low toxic non inflammable low miscibility with while low cost so this is the very important property that low boiling point so generally these refrigerants these are uh, which are used here as a working substance they start boiling at the room temperature also so that is where a very important property of that uh, working substance or refrigerant and a high latent heat of vaporization if this value of uh, latent heat of vaporization is high so that refrigerant is more effective there so these are the properties of that refrigerants which are used in your vcrs now here you can see some commonly used refrigerants just like your uh, r11 r12 r22 r502 r7 and ammonia r7 is also called ammonia so you can see here their properties boiling point uh, almost it is in negative the boiling point of all the refrigerants are negative in negative temperature um, freezing point you can see it is so lower minus one one triple one degree centigrade vapor pressure then vapor volume and enthalpy okay so all these are the properties of that uh, refrigerants that are commonly used in your vcrs so thank you so that was all about my today's topic so thank you very much